Hi everyone and welcome back to one of our tutorials. This time, no, uh, I, uh, did you know? Today we're talking about more like a tutorial and I want to explain you one option, how you can get drivers onto Azure Stack HCI when you're using systems where not every driver is within HCI or if you don't have an integrated system. In my case, I'm using it for my lab systems. So I'm using Intel NUC Extremes 11th generation, where for example, the network drivers or the um, trusted platform module drivers are not part of the, uh, of the driver package, which I can get with HCI. And in addition to that, some of the Intel drivers like the chipset or the graphics drivers require a UI and you cannot put the int files directly in your operating system. So I said today I would like to um, show you how you can use your or well, one method method how you can get those drivers into your HCI operating system. I already prepared a few things. So we are running on one of my hardware systems, which uh, is, as I already said, an Intel NUC 11th gen with the i7 option, um, luckily bought from IM NUC. I will post the link uh, down below with 64 gig of memory and four NVMEs. There will be an accompanying block uh, on Ataro, so on the Ataro Dojo where you will see more details on my configuration. But today, as I said, we are using definitely a system where you will not have drivers for HCI. So we need to get those out of our systems. I installed a Windows Server 2022 on my, op, uh, on my NAC or on my second NAC. I have two of those to get the drivers. So I already installed all required drivers like Bluetooth storage drivers for the opt-in drive, uh, opt drive. So I'm using one NVMe card on PCIe where you need to have the storage drivers installed. I have the graphics drivers. I have the network drivers. I'm missing if uh, there is one driver which I do not require and which is not working on in in the server, like Wi-Fi, etc. But so what? I don't need that. Um, so I left. It, I left it. Um, storage controllers, as you can see, and also the Thunderbolt drivers are installed too. So I will require them for networking. So it will re will replace my uh, redirected memory access controllers in my lab environment. So that's why I require those. So as you can see, all drivers installed. So now how can I export those drivers directly so that I can use it in my HCI operating system later? As easy as that. I've already prepared a command. I will put it into the comments. I will use the PMPUT tool to export all drivers for the systems directly on a USB drive, which I, which I connected to my server. So when I'm later on booting into my HCI operating system, which I, as you may know, boot from um, from a USB thumb drive. I will then mount the device and import it later. You will see that in the second part of the video. And as I said, now let's start. Let's run that and get our drivers onto the USB drive. So we are running. As you can see, it's import exporting all required drivers now. That may take a while. Hi everyone and welcome back after a little jump, time jump. And now on my HCI node. And as you can see here, I'm already, uh, I'm connected. I've opened my S config. And now we can start to install the drivers. To be honest, I already installed a few drivers in the first place so that I can capture the video. So I will I will show you how to do it. Then we will run it through and I will then show you the final result 
within the capture. First, what we need to do is to close dsconfig and go to our PowerShell command line. I'm or uh, then you need to identify your USB drive. In my case, it's already long, um, mounted and it's uh, my D drive. As you can see here, there's my drivers. I will use my PNP util again. I will copy the code line over to my note, as you can see here, I will put you all code lines into the chat. So no worries, you will get that. So then let's fire it up. And after some time, you should see the finalized results. As I said, I already installed a few drivers. So that will then end with your with you maybe also seeing a few drivers already installed. But as I said, at the end, you should see, depending on the numbers of drivers you needed for your service, mostly all packages should be installed on your operating system. Then you go back to your S config by typing it, open the S config again, and then you should see, for example, when you, when you didn't have any network connectors, you go on to the network settings and you should see both adapters or in my case the one adapter mounted so with that said thank you so much for today's video have a great day have a great week and um, until next um, tutorial bye